Hi, Zach here, and welcome to the 11th unit of our Wizards Java Game course. And today, I have something really exciting to show you guys. This is what really excites me, is that we're going to be adding textures into the game. So now, by the end of this episode, we're not just going to have this weird blocky game. Uh, it's actually going to be a wizard game, where we can go around, we, we're an actual wizard shooting like these spells out, and uh, it's going to be really fun. So let's go ahead and begin. So if you're on Cody Made Simple, go ahead and look below and you'll see the download link to this sprite sheet. And this is the sprite sheet we're going to use. You can follow along with the exact code that we're using here. If not, you can actually take the ideas of this sprite sheet and manipulate it to your own. I'm sure you could figure it out easy enough uh, on the, the different coordinates in the sprite sheet system we're going to be setting up. So here's our wizard character, our enemy that's going to be running around, and then also our tile, our block, and our ammo crate. All right, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new class. And we need to create this class. I'm going to name it Sprite Sheet. And essentially what this is going to do is get the actual image and then chop it up or crop it into these different images that we want. So we want like a certain uh, wizard character, right? So we're going to have to crop that from that actual Sprite Sheet and so on and so forth with everything else. And this is going to be the class that actually does it for us. So here in our sprite sheet, what we're going to do is we're going to create a private buffered image. And I'm going to name this image. Control Shift O to import that. And I'm going to create a constructor, public sprite sheet. And I'm going to put in the parameters here, buffered image image. And I'm going to say this dot image equals image. Because initially when we're going to call this sprite sheet, we're going to just add in that, that initial sprite sheet that we actually have, which is this here. So when we actually create this object in our game. So now let's create the method to actually return our cropped image that we want. So I'm going to say public buffered image, because it's going to return an image that we need. Grab image. And here I'm going to put in the uh, parameters column. So int col, int row, int width and int height. So when we grab our image here, what we can do is just simply say it's in this column, in this row, this is the width and height of what I want to grab. This makes it really easy for you. So I'm going to say return image dot get sub image and then the arguments go as followed. It's column multiplied by 32 minus 32. This is row multiplied by 32 minus 32. This is width and this is height. Now I put the 32 and minus 32 so we can simply just say hey if we want to be in column 1 right so let's say we want to grab our first wizard image here what we can do is in the parameters we could say column 1 row 1 which actually equals out to 0 0 and then our width and height. Now if we wanted to go into column 2 it would actually be 32 uh, in the column and then the row would be whatever we want as well. All right. If you had, let's say, a 64 by 64 sprite sheet, where they have 64 by 64 images, then you could simply just take these and put 64 instead of 32. But for now, all of these, the, the actual width here is in 32 for all of them. So that's why we use the 32. So now my other monitor here, I'm just going to drag that sprite sheet. So now we have the actual sprite sheet in our res folder. And now we can go to the game and initialize our sprite sheet. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another private buffered image. I'm going to call it sprite sheet equals null. And then here we want to load that. So we're going to say sprite sheet equals loader dot load image. And this is going to be sprite underscore sheet dot png or whatever you named it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the game, make sure we get no errors on that. Awesome. So now what we can do is initialize our sprite sheet here. So private sprite sheet SS, I'll call it. And then here I could say SS equals new sprite sheet. And I can put in our sprite sheet. Now make sure that it is very important that we initialize our sprite sheet after we've loaded the sprite sheet. If you don't do that, then it's going to get uh, a null because that's what we originally set it to uh, in the actual parameters here. So if we set it up here. We haven't actually even loaded it yet, so it wouldn't make sense. 
So now, because what we want to do is have different textures in all of our enemies, wizards, our blocks, and everything like that, I'm going to go ahead and go into the game object, and I am going to add in our parameters sprite sheet, SS, and I'm going to say this.ss equals SS. Um, let's put that up here, protected sprite sheet, SS. So now we're getting errors in all these different, uh, in everything that uses game object, and that's just because now we need to change this. So we'll just add the argument there if you're using Eclipse. And then we need to put it inside here. So I'll just copy this. Let's go to our block. I'll add the arguments and then paste it there. Go to our bullet. Even though we're not going to use an actual sprite for our bullet, we still need to add it because it's a game object. Our mouse input, uh, because we create that game object, we're getting an error on there now. So just follow along with me. At the end of this, I'm actually going to go through all of the code again if you have any struggles with it. I'm really going to go through it. So here we go. We're adding that sprite sheet again. So now we have a couple different errors. So with our mouse input, we need to put in our sprite sheet, SS, sprite sheet SS, this.ss equals SS, and then right down here we can just pop in our SS when we create the bullet. And now in our game of course, um, when we add this in, we're actually going to add this after our sprite sheet. And then if we go all the way down here, we need to add in our sprite sheet as well. All right, pretty simple. So now let's just go ahead and test real quick and run the game. We're getting no errors and everything's still functioning how it should. Awesome. So now we can add the actual textures into the game. So let's add the floor into the game. Let, let's have that be the first thing. So I'm going to create a private buffered image. And I'm going to do this in the game class because this is where we render our background. And I'm just going to name it floor equals null. And then below here, what I can say is floor equals ss.grabImage. And now if we actually go into here, we can see that it's one, two, three, our fourth column, row two. So it's our fourth column, row two, with 3232. So we've now just cropped that image out of our sprite sheet. And now in our render method, where we used to have our, our background, we can get rid of that. And then put it inside our translate, because we want to actually, we don't, the floor would look weird if it like stayed put. So I'm going to create a quick for, uh, double for loop, so that we can just create a bunch of these tiles in a row. So I'm going to say for... Uh, int xx equals zero. xx is less than, and I'm just going to say 30 multiplied by 72 because that's what worked last time. And it plus equals 32. So for int yy equals zero. yy is less than 30 multiplied by 72. yy plus equals 32. And I'm saying plus equals 32 because that's the actual width and height of our floor. And then we could just draw the floor. So g dot draw image floor at x x y y y, and our image observer is null because we don't have one. So just with that, if we go ahead and run the game, as you can see, check it out. We now have an entire castle floor, just like that. That's really cool. So now we can add in all of our different. Let's add in the block next. So I'm going to go into our block here. I'm going to create private buffered image. I'm going to name it uh, block image, control shift O. And then instead of like drawing this, we're just going to say g.draw. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we have to actually initialize it first. So block underscore image equals SS, grab image. If we go back to our sprite sheet, that's going to be one, two, three, four, our fifth column, row two. So fifth column, row two, 32, 32. And then we could say g.drawImage, block image at our x and y null. So now if we run it again, we have the blocks in the game. So 
So let's make our wizard next. So here I'm going to create, you guessed it, another private buffered image in our wizard class. I'm going to name this uh, wizard. Uh, we'll do underscore image just to keep everything the same. And then in here, I'm going to say wizard underscore image equals ss dot grab image. Now, in the next episode, we're going to actually animate all of this stuff. But for now, we're just going to use our first basic image here. So it's column one, row one, our width is 32, and the height of our character is 48. So down below in our render method, we can say g.draw image wizard image x y null and if we run the game now check it out we're a little wizard guy flying around our little castle now so let's make the enemies next so I'm gonna go into enemy here create another private buffered image enemy underscore image control shift O and enemy underscore image equals ss dot grab image if we go back to our sprite sheet that's one two three four our fourth column row one 32 by 32 and then g dot draw image enemy image x y null we'll run it once more and now we have enemies in our game and now let's for the final one let's do our crate so in our crate private buffered image, crate underscore image, control shift O, crate underscore image equals ss dot grab image. Let's go to the spreadsheet one more time. That's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, sixth row, or sixth column, row two, 32 by 32, and g dot draw image create image x y null and just like that we've added a complete texture pack into our game looks awesome so in the matter of 10 minutes or so we've actually been able to go from a blocky world that had no character at all to now having some sort of theme to our game